It's been over 40 years since steam locomotives ran in regular service in the United States, yet there's still enough interest in steamers that one can see them running on various tourist railroads and railroad museums all over the USA. Although most of them run in the summer, there's nothing more fascinating than seeing a steam locomotive run during the winter season with billowing steam and sometimes lots of snow. In Winter Steam Spectacular, we'll visit five steam railroads and see just why many rail fans consider winter to be the best time to photograph steam. Our first stop is at the southwestern Colorado town of Durango and the famous Durango and Silverton narrow gauge railroad where we'll take the Cascade Canyon winter train. Pulling our train today is number 473, a K-28 class 282 that was built in August of 1923 by the American Locomotive Company and has served here for decades. During the summer, trains travel the entire 45 miles of railroad to the old mining town of Silverton. However, in the winter, they only go as far as Cascade Canyon due to snow slides covering the tracks. Whichever season one rides, this is one of the finest railroad experiences in the entire world. Leaving Durango, we're alongside the Animas River, which we'll see for much of the rest of the trip to Cascade Canyon.
This line is narrow gauge with only three feet between the rails instead of the usual standard gauge with four feet eight and a half inches width. It was once part of the Denver and Rio Grande's extensive system of narrow gauge lines in Colorado and New Mexico. Today, it carries hundreds of thousands of happy passengers each year. The scenery is spectacular, no matter which season you ride. Past Hermosa, the train begins climbing a two and a half percent grade, providing dramatic views.
just past Rockwood, the railroad passes through one of the most impressive parts of the route, called the High Line, where the track is on a narrow shelf over 400 feet above the Animas River. Shortly after negotiating the High Line, the railroad crosses the Animas River, then descends back to river level. We'll see a view of the train crossing this bridge later in the program. The railroad is adjacent to the Animas River and follows it the rest of the way to Silverton. Cascade Canyon Y, the train stops for lunch. Here passengers can get off and do a bit of exploring, view the locomotive, and get warm in front of the fire. All too soon, the train begins the return trip to Durango. Cascade Canyon Winter Train offers a fantastic ride, something the entire family will enjoy. Once back in Durango, the 473 is backed onto the turntable and put to bed for the night.
Once in the roundhouse, the locomotive is prepared for her run tomorrow by being greased and oiled. Durango Roundhouse is both a working roundhouse and a railroad museum. During the winter, in the working part of the roundhouse, most of the locomotives are being prepared for the next summer season of duty. At the time of our visit, the only locomotives in service were the 473, which we just rode, and her sister, the 478, seen waiting here for her next call to duty. All the K36 class locomotives, numbered in the 480 series, were getting overhauled. In the museum part of the complex, one can see a variety of displays. Here we see locomotive number 476, which at the time was awaiting her turn in the shop. Also on display was the private car Nomad, which is available for charter. If one wants to ride to Silverton in style, then this is the way to go. Across the turntable from the roundhouse is the car shop. Here craftsmen both overhaul cars currently in service as well as restore derelict coaches like this one. Once these cars leave the car shop, they'll shine like new and be ready to carry passengers to Cascade Canyon or Silverton. We're once again heading north out of Durango this time on board a special mixed train chartered by a group of photographers. We'll get a chance to get photos up in the Animus Canyon that are usually not possible, as well as see what a mixed freight and passenger train would have looked like in the 1950s. This was a two-day charter, and on one day we had one coach, and on the other we had two.
This train made a rare winter trip past Cascade Canyon, almost to Needleton. From here, we'll begin our return trip to Durango.
Whatever season one rides, the Durango and Silverton is one of the world's greatest railroad experiences, well worth the visit. Continuing on, we travel to Heber City, Utah and the Heber Valley Railroad. The Heber Valley runs for 16 miles from the depot here in Heber City down to Vivian Park in Provo Canyon. Former Union Pacific 280 number 618 is being prepared for a special freight photo charter which will provide some memorable images. Built in 1907 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works, she spends most of her time hauling tourists over this highly scenic former Denver and Rio Grande Western branch line. Parcher is before dawn, and we'll head to the other side of the line at Vivian Park and work our way back to Heber City. Vivian Park is located in a narrow area deep inside Provo Canyon. Here we'll pass over Wildwood Trestle crossing the Provo River and start back towards Heber City.
first three miles out of Vivian Park are quite winding, with grades over 3% in stretches. Perhaps the railroad's biggest landmark is majestic Mount Timpanogos, which towers over the area.
Heber Valley runs alongside Deer Creek Lake, the result of a line relocation opened in 1942 when the Provo River was dammed to create the reservoir.
Heber Valley Railroad is a beautiful place to visit any time of year, but if you have the chance to come during the winter, you won't be disappointed. Moving along, our next place to visit is the New Hope and Ivyland Railroad in far eastern Pennsylvania, where we'll see that one can have a great winter steam experience without any snow on the ground. This 16-mile former Reading Railroad line now carries tourists behind 280 steam locomotive number 40. On this February day, number 40 will be pulling a mixed train for our cameras. Number 40 was built in 1925 for the 30 mile long Lancaster and Chester Railroad in South Carolina and has been repainted in her factory paint just for this occasion. <laughs>
If you're ever in eastern Pennsylvania, then you'll want to make plans to see number 40 for yourself and pay a visit to the New Hope and Ivy Land. Next on the list is one of the great places in railroad preservation, the Nevada Northern. Headquartered in the eastern Nevada town of Ely, the Nevada Northern boasts a railroad yard that has changed little over the years. Located here is the old depot, office building, coaling tower, shop buildings, and other structures that have been here for decades. The historic flavor is also enhanced by vintage rolling stock and locomotives. Rails reached Ely from the north in 1906, 140 miles in all. In 1908, the ore line was completed, and this became the busiest part of the railroad. This line ran from the mining areas near Ruth, north through Ely, then at High Line Junction branched away from the main line to go to the smelter at McGill, and will traverse much of this trackage during our photo charter. The railroad operates a fleet of historic locomotives. The queen of the fleet is number 40, a 460 built by the American Locomotive Company in 1910, which we'll be performing for our cameras today. Also starring is 280 number 93. Built in 1909, she spent many years hauling ore along these very rails until she was retired in the mid-1950s and placed on display in Ely in 1961. Now she's restored and running again on the Nevada Northern and will pull vintage freight equipment for our charter.
Although the Nevada Northern, like most railroads, made its living hauling freight, it did at one time offer passenger service, and number 40 will recreate a train coming to East Ely from the north, stopping at the depot, then heading along the old passenger main towards downtown Ely. This is as far as the old passenger line goes for now, so we'll head east on the adverse line where we'll follow a recreated freight train westbound back towards the mines at Ruth.
At East Ely, just for fun, our freight will be double-headed with both the 40 and the 93 on the point. Number 40 has returned to the engine house as number 93 continues on towards Ruth.
Our freight is returning to East Ely, where number 40 has already been put to bed for the night. Number 93 will soon join her friend and be ready for another day of service on the Nevada Northern, an incredible time machine that you won't want to miss. Our last stop is in Cumberland, Maryland and the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, which runs over nearly 16 miles of former Western Maryland and Cumberland and Pennsylvania trackage between Cumberland and Frostburg. Although it's January and we've got another snowless winter train, we'll make up for that with one of the rarest sights in steam railroading, a steam pusher locomotive. We're on the Maryland side of the Potomac as a GP30 diesel, number 501, leads our small photo train with 280 steam locomotive number 734 bringing up the rear. Of course this train is far too short to really require a pusher on the 1.7% grade out of Cumberland, but it's enough of a train to get a feel of what a steam pusher locomotive was all about.
734 was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1916. During her original career, she hauled iron ore for the Lake Superior in Ishpeming in Michigan and was numbered 34. She's been altered to more resemble Western Maryland steam locomotives from the same era, and the illusion works well here. One of the premier photo locations on this line over the years has been Helmstetter's Curve. This large horseshoe curve that wraps around the Helmstetter family farm has been a favorite photo location for rail fans ever since the days of steam on the Western Maryland, where photographers got photos of long freight trains, some with pushers, going around this then double-tracked curve. Many photos and videos have been taken over the years of 734 going through Brush Tunnel, but probably not too many have been taken from this angle.
The Western Maryland Scenic Railroad runs through spring, summer, and autumn with scheduled passenger service to Frostburg. And there are usually a few photo freights operated too, so you'll want to come see number 734 for yourself. past hour and a half, we've seen that when the snow falls, it's not the time to put the cameras away. Next winter, you may want to find a railroad that's running some steam so you can enjoy your own winter steam spectacular.